Hey everybody, we're going to do surface area and volume. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is some keywords. Surface area means the outside of a figure um, or the cover of figure or wrap or to use paper to wrap it or anything that is square units, you know, like um, feet squared. That is surface area. Volume is how much vomit can fit inside of something, the capacity, the liquid, how much to fill, space, hold, or cubic units, which means units to the third power. So those are the key words that you need to keep in mind. Just ask yourself, am I covering the outside or am I filling it up with something? And you'll know the difference. Um, the first example here says Megan wrapped a present in a cube shaped box. First things first, if they ever give you a cube, that means all the measurements are exactly the same. Okay. The box had an edge length of four. How many square inches of paper were needed to wrap the box if there was no overlap? So, you know, we're looking for surface area of a cube, which is the same thing as the surface area of a rectangular prism. So I'm going to look here. This would be the formula. Surface area is 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. Make sure to watch um, the video about the formula sheet. So 2LW plus 2WH um, plus 2LH. Okay, um, we'll see if I have those. I don't know if I have those in the same right order. I know the formula is right, but LW, LH, WH. LW, LH. Let me put it right. And WH. It doesn't matter, but I want to make sure it's in the same order as your formula sheet. Then we need to go through, and we the calculator does not know what L is, so we have to tell it. The calculator does not know what W is, so we have to tell it. The calculator does not know what the H is, so we have to tell it. Since it's a cube, that makes it easy because everything is exactly the same. So this means that you would need 96 inches squared of paper to wrap that cube since it is um, looking for surface area. All right, use your calculator exactly the way we're showing you because that will save you so many mistakes. All right, which is the closest to the surface area? This time it tells you because it doesn't even make you guess. It tells you you're looking for surface area of this cone. Now, they may show you an ice cream cone, they may show you a party hat, but look, if one base is a circle and it's pointy, that's a cone. So let's go ahead and look at the formula sheet. And the surface area of a cone, a cone is right down here at the, sec the third row, second column, that's a cone. Do not mistake it for the square base pyramid, they are not the same. Do not mistake it for a cylinder. Okay, so the surface area is pi r squared plus pi r l. So I'm going to put that in pi r squared, okay, plus pi r l. Okay, and we're going to ask ourselves again. The calculator does not know what an r is. It does know what pi is, but it doesn't know what the r is and it doesn't know what the L is. So we have to give it that information, okay? So first things first, I'm gonna go back to the formula sheet. If you look at the cone, it shows you in the picture that L is the slant height, it's the side, and radius is from the middle to the edge. So just use your pictures to help you when you're doing this. So since we see that this this is not the radius, this is the diameter because it goes all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, but then I'm going to divide it by two because I know that to get the radius, I have to cut the diameter in half. Then my L is my slant height, and my slant height is what comes up the slanted side. 
that is a 10. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So that means my surface area is 98 point, it should be 2. There was a little bit of a rounding error here. But this would be my answer right there. That's my surface area. Um, this height, that would be H, but there's no H in the surface area formula. Um, the H is in your volume formula. So sometimes they will give you extra information. Use the pictures on your formula sheet to help you. Alrighty, here we go. This says Timothy built, he built, so that usually means outside, a wooden square-based pyramid for a history class on Egypt. He needs to buy enough gold paper to cover it. So yes, this is definitely surface area. So we have to find surface area of a square-based pyramid. It says what's the minimum amount of gold paper he needs to purchase. So if you look, the square base has a side length of 2.5. So I'm actually going to draw a square here. Well, I was trying to draw a square, not a very good one. And I know that every single side is exactly the same. So I'm going to put a congruency mark, one mark on each side that tells me every single side of that square base is 2.5. Okay. Then I look here down the side, which is a slant height. So I know that 1.5 is my L. It's my slant height. So let's look at our formula for a square base pyramid. First one, third row. Surface area says one half LP plus big B. So one half, okay, LP plus big B. Let's talk about what those things mean. First of all, if you use your formula sheet, it will tell you P is for perimeter, B is for area of the base. You can also look big B is the area of that brace and the P is the perimeter of that base. So let's go ahead and figure out the L first because it's given to you. So L is 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the calculator because the calculator doesn't know. Calculator also does not know the perimeter of my base. So I'm going to look right here at the picture of my base, which is this square. We're pretending it's a square. Okay, And I'm going to figure out the perimeter. Well, the perimeter is all of the sides added together. 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5. Or you know they're all the same because it's a square. You can just take the side and multiply it by 4, and that gives you the perimeter. Now, big B is different than little b. Little b is base. Big B is the area of the base. And to take the area of a square, you just multiply one side times the other side because they are exactly the same, okay? And that gives you 6.25. Another easy way to do the area of a base is just to do 2.5 and square it. That will give you that also. So the answer to this problem is 13.75 feet square. That is the minimum amount of paper he will need to buy. Okay, make sure to watch this one a couple of times so you understand everything I did. Alrighty, we've got a paperweight um, and it has a square base pyramid and it's filled with molten glass so you're filling it. This one is going to be volume. How many cubic inches of molten glass are needed to fill the paperweight? So again, that's a square base pyramid. We're going to go to our formula sheet. The volume for a square base pyramid is one third big B H. So let's put that in. One third big B and H. Calculator does not know the big B. We got to tell it that and it doesn't know the H, so we have to tell it that. Well, fortunately, they tell us the height is four inches. The height will always be from the tippy top dropped straight down to a right angle. So we know the height is four. Area of the base, we have to figure this out. So I'm gonna draw a square again. Again, I'm gonna try to draw a square. 
I know that if it's a square, every single side is the same. And it's telling me that a side is three. So to find big B, I'm going to do three times three or three squared, because that's the area of the base. So that means the volume here is 12 okay, inches cubed. That's how much molten glass it will take to fill it. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, this one says that Anna built a prism, one prism, out of a cube of wood. The side lengths of the cube measured 18 inches. So we've got that right here, prism one. Then Anna built another prism with the same dimensions as the cube she built, except she doubled its height. So if this is a cube, that means everything is the same. That means my length, my width, and my height were all 18. But then over here, she did another one. And it said that she doubled the height. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, well, she doubled the height. Um, so the length and the width stayed the same. So those stayed 18, but this was 18 times 2, the height. What is the volume, or how does the volume of the two prisons compare? They're not asking you to figure it out. They're just asking what's going to happen. Well, when you multiply, oops, sorry about that, one attribute, which is one part of it, uh, that was going to do the same thing to the volume. So if you doubled the height, that means your volume will also double. Okay. And it says, how does it affect the surface area? Well, it will make it bigger, but you have no idea how much bigger unless you actually figure it out um, and use the formula. But just know that whenever you change the length, the width, or the height, one of those at a time, however you change it, whether you make it two times bigger or half as big, the same exact thing will happen to the volume. Okay, you can tell whether the surface area goes up or down, but you can't tell exactly how much. All right, we'll see you in a bit for the next video.